So in very simple terms, capital allowances are plant machinery equipment which are fixed to a building but aren't an inherent part of a building. So in this room here, Sunil, name one item that's fixed to this building but isn't intrinsic to the building. Okay. Joanna? Uh, lights. Lights? Shamila? No. Window. No. Aircon? Yeah. Bathrooms. Bathrooms, yeah. Doors? Doors. Yeah. 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 Flooring? Flooring? Yeah. yeah. I think you can move it out. Mm -hmm. Smokes? Yeah. Okay. It's got cameras. Fire cameras? Fire alarm system, yeah? With all of that stuff over there? Yeah. No, no, they're intrinsic to the building. Uh, so all of these items here, you can add up. Power yeah. points. Yeah. All that. You got it. You got it. All of this equipment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anything which you can rip out and take out. Curtains. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that you wouldn't do because you got other interesting stuff to do. But you could do. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah. So I talked to you about earlier, I can't remember who it was yesterday, said they bought a building, can I claim capital allowances? I said, you can't claim capital allowances now unless you agreed with the seller mm -hmm. a figure or, and don't put zero, NA or nil uh, or put a clause in there to say we need to agree within 60 days. I said to you, there is something you can claim which is called integral features. Okay, That's, this, is a, this is a much smaller claim and these are the kind of items uh, that you can claim for integral features, okay? So you've got electrical systems, cold water systems, whatever, space and water heating. So you can see it's quite limited uh, and you only claim 6%. It really isn't worth it. But if you've missed the main claim, you could do this, but this is going to be like 5% of what you could have claimed, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you still have to agree this beforehand or not? No. This one you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here is a list for you of, because people usually ask, what can we claim as capital allowances? Here's a list for you of the kind of items, and this, this isn't an exhaustive list, the kind of items you can claim for capital allowances. So you see the curtains up there, okay, blinds and curtains, yeah? Carpets, yeah? All of this stuff here, we don't need to run through every single one, but you've got it there to give you a good idea of what we can claim, but I want to get to, to uh, what is here. Okay, so when you spend money on capital allowances, it goes in, in different pools, which I'm going to share with you in a moment. Depending on the pool it goes into, you claim a certain percentage every year. There's a general pool, so in the, in the general pool, you can only claim 18% every single year. Okay, so Nehal, you've bought a property and it's got a hundred thousand pounds worth of capital allowances, yeah? Yep. You can claim 18% every year. So in the first year you're claiming 18,000, yeah? And then you get tax relief on this figure here. So the tax relief is at 19%, okay? Let's call it 20%, yeah? So you get 3,600 tax relief, yeah? Then 100 grand minus 18 grand, okay? Which gives you 82,000. That's the figure for next year. And then year two, you claim 18% of this, whatever that equals, yeah? Right, and then I think it takes you 21 years or something to write down the whole balance, okay? That's how you write down capital allowances. That's option one. Option two, which is a much, much better option for you, is you've got something called AIA, which is up there for you, Annual Investment Allowance, okay? Now usually, you can, the AIA is 200,000 pounds, but the government changed the rules and have extended the rules up to 31st of March, 2023, it's a million pounds. And what this is, is if you spend a million pounds on capital allowances, you can claim that all in the same year. Now the benefit of that is if you claim it all in the same year, you don't have to wait 21 years to use this figure. So you, and your profit might not be a million pounds to here, but you've, you've claimed it, you make it 
taxable loss and you carry the loss forward and every year you're making profit, you just use it against the loss. Yeah? How can you go back uh, five, six years of work that's been done? Capital uh, claim, not capital? Mm, there's no limit. Okay. No limit. So as long as the item exists, we get it valued, okay. you're sorted. As long as some, no one's claimed that before. Oh, so how do you know that? You'd have to get a list of what they claim what they have. You would have to ask them, yeah. uh, and they usually won't know. And I can tell you, most people you're going to buy property from, unless it's a, it's a big charity or a big corporate, they haven't claimed property allowances. Unless it's a somebody who's pretty sharp, uh, you don't get many of those people. Most people who own commercial property, okay, haven't claimed property allowances. So Based on. Go and make a list like we have just now. And no, well, there's. What you do is, you just make sure on the CPSC, we don't put zero in question number 32, okay? And we negotiate with them that we're gonna claim capital allowances. It's not gonna have an impact on, on, on their tax, okay? And they have to enter into a section 198 election, and that's it. That's on buying. On buying, yeah. If you, if you already bought, then we've got a problem. And you don't know what they claim. Yeah, then we can't claim. Can't claim Apart from the- Anything. Apart from those, yeah, on integral features with the heating system, cooling system, it's, yeah. it's going to be a small amount. But even a small amount? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. We can have a look at that for you. So you just uh, go around do an inventory of those podcasts to claim it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, AIA means you can claim the whole lot in one year, okay? So if you spend £200,000 after 31st of March 2023, you claim the entire 200 grand in one go. If you don't claim it, in one go and you only claim let's say 50,000 then the other 150 grand that you've got left you carry forward and in year two the maximum you can claim is only 18 percent of this figure yeah and that's going to take you a long time like I said I've got the number of years on the slide here I think it's 21 years to use this up so where you where possible claim your AIA in the year yeah it gives you an immediate tax advantage rather than waiting for the next uh, X number of years. Okay, let's look at an example and then we'll go for lunch. So the word is a bit small here, but you've got the slide there. So this particular uh, company has got a million pounds profit, okay, chargeable to tax. In their plant and machinery pool, which is called the general pool, they've got two million pounds worth of uh, allowances remaining. In their special rate pool, and I'll cover special rate for you uh, in, in, on the slides in a few moments or after lunch, they've got a million pounds. If where it says less capital allowances, that's the important bit. In your general pool, you can claim 18%, like I said so over there, okay, per year. In your special rate pool, you can only claim 8% every year. So you claim 18% of 2 million, which gives you 360,000 pounds. You claim 8% of a million, uh, which gives you 80,000. So now your taxable profit goes from 1 million pounds down to 560. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. yeah? So you're now going to pay tax on 560 and not a million pounds. You had 2 million pounds worth of plant and machinery and a million pounds in the special rate pool. You've used up 360 and uh, 80 on a million pounds at 19 percent you'd have paid 190 grand tax on 560 you're paying 106,000 pounds tax so you're saving best part of 84,000 pounds tax in that year because of capital allowances yeah that's the net saving to you then what happens is just see the example through whatever figure I'll go over here I think it'll be easier whatever figure you use up is used then you've got the net balance that gets carried forward and in year two you you use that 18 percent year three year four you just keep going on until you use up the entire balance and uh, over here after 15 years if you're claiming 18 percent every year you're going to use up 95 percent of the starting figure so it takes about 18 19 years to use the whole thing that's why you're better off claiming the annual investment allowance writing it off in year one. Why do you want to wait 15 years to write off uh, your uh, allowances when you can do it in year one? Yeah? 
So could you claim all of it and then have a loss that you carry forward? Yes, you would carry, yeah. yeah. Unless, unless you made enough profit. Yeah. But if you haven't made enough profit, you have a loss to carry forward, yeah. There is one downside which I'm going to come on to, uh, but generally speaking, you should be okay. So back to that example that we then had we'll on, come to you. Sorry. Yeah. on day one, when there was a total expenditure for capital allowances. One to six, yeah. Yes. The reason it was, oh gosh, uh, the 23 tax here, that was the 18% that you were allowed to claim that year. Is that correct? No, that's the tax. Ad so it's that figure times 19% gives you that. Because you, you're saving tax at 19%. So if you look at, if you go into the slides, believe me. So, so next slide. So that's this figure here, yeah? Yes. That's this figure here. So it's the total amount that I claimed, okay? At 19. 19, okay. yeah. Oh, right, thank yeah, you. That's that figure there. Okay, Laura. So what happens if you claim annual investor's allowance all in one year, but then two years down the line, line disposal that's the, that's the little problem that's the that little upset problem. to okay. here we've got. Okay. Which and becomes... How do you mean capital allowances? Because you're saying, you know, in year one we have however much, 200,000 capital allowances that we claim. If you then do refurb, you could buy a plant machinery, you could buy a van, do whatever. You top it up. Then you're topping it up and it's yeah. the top up figure that's... Yeah, that's right. Okay. So I will cover that little problem for you in uh, after the lunch. Let's look at this slide, just so you know the different types. So it is quite complicated. So these are the different types of pools that you have for capital allowances. So when you buy an item, it either goes in the main pool, the special rate pool, the enhanced capital allowances, uh, which are usually energy efficient items, short life assets, long life assets, and contributions allowances uh, and it, so it is pretty complicated but it's important you pick, get it in the right uh, place cool okay so for your main pool where you claim 18% these are some of the items that go in there uh, just by way of example so you know how it works for your enhanced pool basically uh, to keep it simple it's energy efficient items and when you buy those you can claim 100% in the year that you make the expenditure in. Okay, That's, this is why different pools are uh, dealt with differently and it's important you put your uh, expenditure in the, in the right pool. Because if you put it in the wrong pool, then you, you can't always claim the right amount, which means it might take you longer to uh, Get the money back, yeah? So if you make a contribution to somebody else's expenditure, then you can also claim some of the allowance, depending on how, how much of a contribution you make. So if you, for example, if you have a lease and, and the building is in yours, you can still claim capital allowances because you've made a contribution mm -hmm. towards the building. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's a common question that people ask. Yeah? Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that you can do uh, in terms of claiming capital allowances, uh, funds to lets, historical expenditure, which is when, you, when you're buying a building, a new build, fit out, okay, additional capital expenditure, enhanced allowances, funds to lets, which we're going to cover in a moment, okay. So those are the opportunities for you when you can claim capital allowances when these events take place. Some of these may uh, happen for you, some, some may not. Now, generally speaking, people say, what percentage can I claim? And you'll recall from yesterday, uh, I don't like percentages, but because it keeps coming up, I've given you a table there of the likely percentage you could claim for capital allowances. Uh, so, and this is based on how much equipment there would be in a building. Okay, so yeah, if, if you're buying a shopping center or commercial offices, you're looking at between 20 to 40%. But this isn't fixed, by the way. You could buy a, a, a shop, okay, which has no capital allowances because there's nothing in it. You could have a shop where you can have 50% capital allowances because it's, it's got a lot of stuff in it. But generally speaking, this is a kind of ballpark figure, but don't take this as gospel. This is just a ballpark indication for you, okay? It depends on what's in a building. 
Um, Chef, did you go through the different, like you said, with, I think HMOs, you can't, it's, it's a... Yeah, HMOs, you were, at one point, you were able to claim uh, in the common mm. and communal areas, yeah. okay? Now you can only claim in the common areas, uh, so the claim is going to be very, very limited and restricted. So is it even worth it? Unless it's a very large HMO, no. By large HMO, I mean 20 or more units. Okay, so no. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a very small claim. I mean, ev everything adds up, by the way, but by the time you uh, put the effort in and pay the fees and everything else, I don't think it's worth it. Can you class numerous HMOs that together to Sorry? Could you put numerous HMOs together? You would still, you would still do it per building. Right. Okay, but, yeah, but if you've got a, a fair few HMOs, it might be worth it, but it, it's, just, it's just the common areas. Okay. And that's going to be for the security, the cameras, the smoke, the fire alarms, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a very small claim, unless you've got a lift in there. That's going to enhance the uh, capital allowances. Yeah. So this is just an example for you that if you bought uh, <coughs> property in your own name and you claimed capital allowances versus uh, and being a 45% taxpayer versus uh, buying in, in a company. So. Uh, it just gives you an example of that this really links to what I shared with you yesterday about having an LLP. You can see if you have, a, if you have an LLP and you're a 45% taxpayer, the savings is going to be much bigger for you because you're saving 45% tax and not 19% corporation tax. Yeah, That's just an example for you to show you some of the differences. And in the hotel, you can see it's pretty significant. Should you buy a hotel to operate as a hotel? No, you could uh, lease it out, but uh, usually people, when they buy it, they, they, they operate it as well. Yeah. So you could lease the hotel yeah. to an operator, and because you own the building, you can still claim capital allowances on the purchase, as long as you've negotiated with the seller. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Then when, when you sign the lease, the person who buys out or get, uh, is granted the lease, they will then uh, incur possibly further expenditure, and any expenditure they incur, they'll claim the capital launch on that, you can't. Yeah? So here's just a, a reminder for you to make sure that when you're going through the DD, to make sure that you include in there, uh, in the CPSC, uh, that you're either going to make a section 198 uh, election, or you say to them, within 60 days, you're going to give them a figure, and they're going to negotiate with you. Yeah? We've already covered this point. Uh, but it's, you've got to make sure that when you are going through the legal DD, do not put zero nil NA, okay? Because then you're going to lose your right to capital allowances. And the claim has to be, your allowance claim has to be, um, the report for that has to be collated by a qualified individual. Yeah, that's right. Because they'll know exactly what they're looking for and they can quantify the items and the value. And then you keep a copy of that report, you claim the allowances, HMRC have a check, say, here's the report. This is what it was in there. What usually happens is that person goes in, they take photos. It's good practice for you to take photos too, because sometimes what happens is people forget to claim capital. You won't forget now because you've been on this course. Some people forget to claim uh, uh, the allowances. If you've got photographic evidence, we can still claim. Mm -hmm. But you've got to take a photo of every single item and every single room. Yeah? So let's finish this point off. So this was the point that uh, Laura made. If you claim capital allowances on a building, so let's say you had £200,000 worth of capital allowances and you've claimed £200,000 in the year, so you've got no allowances left. In the second year, you then sell a building and the value 
and this is where it's important when you negotiate with the seller. Uh, in the value of this is 130,000. You then have to pay tax on this 130,000. And this is called a balancing charge. Does that make sense to everybody, or shall I run through that again? OK. So if uh, sell, you claim all your capital allowances in one go using the annual investment allowance, then you don't want to sell the building for a few years. Yeah. If you do sell it okay, soon after having claimed the annual investment allowance, okay, you're going to have to pay a balancing charge. Because when you sell the building, these items still have some value. For tax purposes, you've written them off, but when you've sold them, okay, they had a value, in this case, 130,000 pounds, so you've got to pay tax on this because, you, because you've already claimed 100% of the allowance, yeah? Now, this, it, this, it works the same in the other way around. Or the, or, so if you've got 200,000 pounds worth of allowances and you've used A hundred thousand, so it's worth, no, let's make this, you've used 50,000, yeah? So you've, you've got 150 left, and you sell it for, for 130. Because you've got more allowances available than um, what you sold them for, you get the, the difference, which is 20,000 pounds, as an additional allowance on sale, which is called a balancing allowance. Yeah? So if you claim all and then make additional funds, it's a balancing charge. If you claim less and then sell it for less, and you then get a balancing allowance. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, I'll run through again to here. No, just if I ask a question. So you've got profit there of 2,000. No, sorry. This is the value of your capital allowances. This is the value of your capital allowances. Yeah, so you've got 200 grand worth of capital allowances. Yeah. If you claim all the 200 grand in one go, using your annual investment allowance, yeah. remember, at the minute, up, up until 31st of March 2023, you can claim 1 million in one go. After that, this will drop down to 200,000 pounds. That's why I've just used 200 grand as an example. Yeah. So you've claimed your 200 grand in, in the year, because you know if you don't claim it all in, in the year, then going forward, you can only claim a maximum of 18% every year. And that's going to take you best part of 18 years to use up. Yeah? So you've said, let me all claim it all up front. You claim, claim it all up front. Two years later, you're saying, I'm going to sell the building. When you sell the building, the value of capital allowances is £130,000. Well, you, the value in your books is zero. You've sold it for 130 you You've made a profit. OK? Because you, you wrote it all off. You made a profit, therefore you've got to pay tax on this at 19% at if, if it were sold today. Yeah? Okay. If you only write off 50,000 pounds, so there you, therefore you've got 150 remaining, and you sell it for 130, well, you've made a loss, yeah? Because you've sold it for less than what it's worth in the books, and because you've made a loss, you get the 20,000 pounds as an additional allowance, so you save tax at 19% on this figure. So you've got to be careful how you claim the allowances, uh, especially if you're not sure if you're going to continue keeping the asset. Generally speaking, if you're going to keep hold of it, like Sunil is, claim the whole lot in one go. If, you, but if you're saying, I might sell it in a couple of years, I'm not sure, part of it. then just claim part of it. Uh, although, the flip side is, claim it all now, claim it all now, you get the tax relief now, so you've got a cash flow advantage, later on you'll have to pay some back, that could be two or three years time, so what, at least you've got the cash advantage now, and if you pay it back, you're not any worse off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that depend on what you negotiate those capital assets worth on this form that you're saying? That's right. Put zero or nil. So if yes. you say, I've claimed 150,000, I'm keeping 150,000, you yeah. can't claim anything. Yes. Um, or I'll give you a pound's worth of cash and allowances. Yes. Um, that's why they, they, you don't have a pound. That's why they put a pound here, you see? 
because then whatever figure they've got here, okay, yeah. uh, if it's a pound here, they're only paying tax on a pound because they've used up all their allowances. Yeah. But we know most people who we buy buildings from, or commercial buildings from, don't claim capital allowances anyway. So this doesn't affect them. It's only a small percentage of companies and uh, people who know about capital allowances who claim them. Most people haven't claimed. So if you're buying a building, do you just say what of the capital, what capital allowances have you claimed? Yes. But they won't give you that information, so you, that's why you enter into a Section 198 election, and through that, then they give you the information. Right, okay. Yeah? Because what you don't want to do then is potentially prompt them to claim capital allowances. Very common question that people ask. <laughs> By the time we get there, as in you're about to exchange, uh, then just, they just want to sell the property. I've never had anybody pull out, pull out. 11th hour. Oh, yeah. what about capital allowances? Yeah, yeah, never had it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there could be three or four moving parts, whereas the, as in you're trying to do a VAT 1614D, for example, they don't like that. Uh, you're negotiating something else, maybe they've got a sitting tenant, you don't like the lease. Uh, you've got capital allowances, so there's three or four things going on. And those three or four things uh, get to a stage where they, they get really annoyed and they'll pull out. But purely just for capital allowances, never had anybody pull out. Because by that time, mentally, They've committed an already exchange and sold the property, if you know what I mean. So, but can they, they can't claim after the property is sold anywhere. They can. They can. Because if they put a pound in here, okay? Oh, okay yeah. yeah, they put a pound here. And they've got 150 left. They're going to claim 149,999, yeah? So we don't know what this figure is for them, by the way. Could be zero, could be 150, could be anything. So whatever this figure is, less this figure, they get an allowance. If this figure is zero, and they get a, uh, a pound for, for the capital allowances, they pay 19 pence in tax. Usually, this figure isn't going to be zero. It'll be some kind of a figure, depending on how, many, how much they spent on the building over the course of the ownership. But somebody would have done the assessment and got it agreed with HMRC before the property was at that stage in the sale process. No. So, I mean, how could they go back and say, oh, well, I've got this, I've got that. They've got to have pictures already and their value is going to say, oh, it's like 200,000 capital allowances with that building that you already sold and Shaz is living in it now or using it as his office. I mean, how, how can I claim it back retrospectively after I've sold it? Because when you sell it... Yeah. And I, just, I put pounds there. Yeah. When, when you sell it, you've got your tax computation, yeah? Yeah. And if you, if you ever had a look, look at your tax computation, if you claim capital allowances, you'll have a whole page listing out all the items you've got, a bit like we've got over here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. All, all of those items will be listed, and they'll say, Main pool, special rate pool, short life asset, long life asset, enhanced capital allowances, yeah? So you'll know what the figures are, your accountant will know what the figures are for your purposes. Okay. All of those uh, uh, items added together will give you a figure which goes here. So you don't have to go anywhere to work those out, you know what, the, okay. what this figure is. This pound helps us understand whether we've got to pay a balancing charge, in which case it's 19 pence, or we get a balancing allowance, in which case it's going to be 149,000 using this example. Eh? So they don't have to go anywhere to work it out. Okay? But like I said, most people you're going to buy buildings from apart from WH Smith, they will claim capital allowances, I can tell you that. Okay? Because they're working with KPMG, EY, whoever, they always claim capital allowances. But most people you're going to buy buildings from are going to be small property investors, okay, uh, they haven't claimed capital allowances. So effectively, if you're negotiating your capital allowances at the point of purchase, and they've already claimed them through the annual investors investment or whatever, they're going to end up with a balancing charge. Yes. If they agree that you can have 100,000 and we'll have 100,000. Yeah, then yeah, that's right. And, and they're not going to be very happy about that. And they're not going to be very happy about that. Yeah, but you're saying, I'm buying your building, it's and got this stuff here, is, this has got some value. That's what I'm partly paying you for. Okay. Yeah? So
So therefore, we've got to attribute something towards these items. Yeah. So you either have a fixed amount, or you say we're going to come in, we're going to value it, uh, and then put a figure to it. Yeah. You want to go in and value it and put a figure to it because that figure is going to be higher than the figure you're going to negotiate with them because they're going to keep that as low as possible because they want to avoid this. Yeah. But if they've never claimed capital allowances, if they haven't claimed, then, then this isn't going to affect them in any shape, way, form, act or manner. Because on, the, on their tax computation, they don't have that page for capital allowances, so, so they're going to show we've sold said building for a million pounds, we bought it for 400 grand 15 years ago, we made a 600,000 pound gain, and they're going to pay tax on that. They're not going to have this thing here. This only applies if they've claimed capital allowances, okay, on some of the expenditure. But most big companies, councils, oh, charities, they're all going to claim their capital allowances. Yeah, councils won't because they don't pay tax. Charities won't because they don't pay tax. But, but then you have to ask them. You just you, you have to ask them. them. And charities are paying the ass as are councils. Uh, w. H. Smith and B. T. and all the all the big blue chip corporates will do. But if a council has never claimed capital allowance and there is there are items there, yeah, does that not automatically roll over to the new buyer because that that allowance has never been claimed? No, you, you have to do a section one nine eight to carry it forward. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, by the way, make sure you click like, subscribe and post a comment uh, because that tells me that you're engaging and you're finding the content useful. And if you like this video, make sure you check out this video here because it's the next stage in terms of your learning and development.